Hello boys and girls, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. On this occasion I am going to teach you how to dolder and solder SMD components. These are SMD type components, or surface mount components. The pins of these components do not go to the other side of the board. Therefore, the soldering has to be on the surface of the board. Soldering is not much of a problem. The problem is removing it or soldering it. To do this, use a soldering iron. It turns out to be very complicated. Therefore, sometimes, or usually hot air stations are used. Hot air stations are very expensive tools and sometimes difficult to handle. However, on this occasion, I am going to teach you another method which consists of using an appliance that almost all of us have at home, which will allow us to remove these components in a fairly simple way, and in this way be able to use the components in other projects. For example, the microcontroller was removed from this board in order to develop a project, these types of components are very complicated to remove with a soldering iron. Therefore, another method is needed to remove them. You can also remove the LEDs from damaged lamps. In order to recycle them and use them in different projects. So without further ado, let's start with the video. Okay, guys. For this activity we are going to use a common iron. Any iron will do. Whether it's an iron that you are not using or a new one that you want to use for this project. Don't worry, we are not going to burn your iron. Any iron will do since all irons reach almost the same working temperature. Mine does not exceed 572 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect for soldering and unsoldering SMD components. First of all, our irons have a thermostat that allows us to vary the temperature, either at maximum or medium temperature, depending on the needs. For safety, we will place it at a medium point, and after that we will place it at maximum temperature in case we need more heat to be able to melt the tin that the components have. Now the next step would be to turn our iron over and place it in this position and find some supports to place them on the sides so that our iron does not move. That is why I am going to use this transformer. And I am going to use this other transformer. Preferably the supports that are not flammable. Arrange it so that it is as straight as possible and that it is firm. We are not going to work with this part since if you lean on it the iron will move. However, the back part is completely firm, so we are going to work on this part. So let's move on to placing our electronic boards to solder and dolder SMD components. Okay, let's turn on the iron. Remember that it's at half power. Let's let it heat up for a minute, and then we'll test the temperature with a tin wire. If the tin melts, it means that the temperature is appropriate. If it doesn't melt, we'll raise the temperature to the maximum, and then we'll do the test again. Well, if it doesn't melt, we'll increase the temperature to the maximum and then we'll do the test again. Alright, we've just put the iron at the maximum temperature. And we're going to test if it's at the right temperature.
There you can see that the tin melts, so we can place our plate. But first, let's put a little flux on the component we want to remove. We put it on the iron and wait a few seconds. Then we remove the component. In order to remove the component, you must apply pressure to the plate. We wait a moment longer. Remember that the iron has a thermostat that regulates its temperature. Therefore, it will be constantly turning on and off. When it is turned on, the temperature increases. So at that moment, the temperature is increasing. And that is when we should take advantage to remove the component. And then we remove the board. Okay, guys, now to resolder the integrated circuit that we removed a moment ago, we have to prepare our board. How will we prepare our board? Well, we have to remove all the excess tin, or the excess tin from the tracks or pins of our integrated circuit or component. In order to do that, we would normally have to use a desoldering wick. But in this case, we are only going to use a fine copper wire since I do not have a desoldering wick. But you can still use this, which you can get from the cables. From here, you can take this copper wire and use it as a desoldering wick. And we are also going to use a soldering paste to be able to remove all the tin. We are going to use our soldering iron. We put a little paste. And with the help of the soldering iron, we are going to press to remove the excess tin. There you can see that there is a difference. There is no excess tin here. And yet, there is still some here. All the tin is going to stick to the wire with the help of the paste. We do the same with the other group of pins. Well, now we have it completely clean. Now we have to clean all of this with a little alcohol. And with the help of a brush we are going to clean it and remove all the grease that we have coming from the paste. You can use a brush. Or you can use a cotton swab. And there you can see how it turned out. It is completely shiny. Now we are going to put a little bit of solder paste. We are going to put this on the terminals or the pins of our component.
Don't worry if you are not precise on the pins. When you heat it on the iron, the tin will move to the terminals of the integrated circuit. Try not to put more than necessary. It's more or less. Now we are going to place the integrated circuit on the solder paste. Don't forget to clean the integrated circuit. Remove any grease that it has. Try to align the integrated circuit as best you can. Then we will put it on the iron so that it can be soldered correctly. Very well, I have the iron ready. So we are going to place our board so that it can start soldering. We wait for it to heat up. You will be able to see how the solder paste will melt and stick to the terminals of the integrated circuit. We press a little. Ready, now if you need to remove any other component, you can take advantage of it. And in this way you can remove the components that need to be removed. Okay, once the board is cooled enough you can see how the soldering turned out, which is pretty good. And with a little practice, you can solder your components. And also soldering them if necessary, as you have just seen, is not very complicated. Okay guys, now don't forget that you can remove the LEDs from the lamps to be able to recycle them and use them in other projects. To do this, we just place it on the board as we did with the other board. We wait a bit for the components to heat up. If you want, you can put flux on it, but if you don't put it on, it is not a problem. And as you can see, the LEDs can be removed very easily. And that's it. As you have just seen, we have removed all the LEDs. In this simple way, you can remove the LEDs and recycle them. Well, here we have the LEDs that we have just removed from this board. Don't worry if the board changes color, it is normal for it to do so. Since this is paint, it is normal for it to darken a little. Now we have the LEDs which we can use for other projects. We can test their condition. As you can see, they all work. I hope they all work. Now, if you want, you can also resolder them using the solder paste again. Place it the same way as on the previous board, and position all the LEDs respecting the polarity. Once this is done, you can place it on the board and it will do its job of resoldering the components on the board. Well, guys, this concludes the video. Now don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye bye.